Hello and welcome to the video. This is an update video on how I've been getting on putting a flight controller and everything else inside this little ZOHD Dart 250G. Now this originally um, was being flown with the VC400 in the front and the co-pilot light and that was fine actually um, unless you're flying in less than ideal conditions because the camera on the VC400 is not great when it's demanding scenes with high contrast. And the other thing was, is I'm missing one screen display, uh, and I want to see all that goodness, really. Plus, I also had, if you remember, this little flight controller. Uh, this is the Racer Star. I do love it when they make logos that actually hide part of their name. Uh, the graphic designer needs to have another look at that. Racer Star F405. This was a little flight controller that I looked at recently. And I thought, you know what, this is a perfect little size. This will fit inside here and I can set everything up. And that's what I did. So here are a couple of images of how it all fitted in. Now the layout here is pretty standard stuff. Um, the GPS is actually at the back by the ESC. Uh, the flight controller is in the normal place, sat on a couple of lollipop sticks that I glued into position because the foam had been damaged when I pulled out the little uh, stabilizer. And then the camera at the front. However, after I'd gone to all that trouble, uh, there was one day where the wind was low enough, because I want to maiden this on almost a perfectly calm day, uh, took it to the field, was trying to launch it, something wasn't working very happily, went into the ground and the flight controller broke loose. And unfortunately, something touched something else and when I picked it up, uh, I was first indication was actually my video transmitter, my VTX signal in my um, goggles just disappeared completely. It was just static, which usually means your VTX isn't on. Um, and then when I picked it up, there was that lovely smell of cooked electronics. Checking out uh, what happened is the power wire that goes from the bottom board on this, which is where you attach your power connections, uh, and then it goes up via some teeny weeny little pins into the boards above, that trace had been completely cooked. So something had happened with the VTX. Uh, I don't know whether that had moved, whether it was the flight controller moving, but the bottom line was the VTX was cooked, had that lovely hot plastic smell. In fact, gosh, this still smells of it, and it was about a week ago. Um, ugh, that smell is horrible. It seems to stick to, uh, to foam as well. I don't know if you've ever had that. Anyway. Bottom line was, I thought, you know what, I can't trust this anymore. So I needed another mini little flight controller that would go into this model as it was kind of pretty much ready. So unfortunately, the VTX is going to go in the bin along with the flight controller. Uh, I genuinely think this is something that uh, happened that killed it and it's because it broke loose and something touched. In all the bench setups and everything else, it was actually working fine. There were only a couple of limitations that I found with this thing. First of all, if you go into iNav, there's a massive list of UARTs listed. Uh, that, I think, because it's using the F405 target. The Matic F405 is a much bigger board with much more pins. Uh, that was a bit disappointing. I also struggled to get the smart port working on this as per the diagram that's on the website. So I couldn't have the Lua script on my radio, which is something that I kind of uh, use pre-launch just to wait for the GPS to lock and everything. Don't keep having to pull my goggles down. So in version one of the build, there was a couple of things that I learned. First of all, inside the 250G, if you are using one of the little flight controllers, uh, like the Racer Star or like the F411, uh, the little version here that I'm using inside here. There is actually lots of room if you are tidy. And I think I could have been a lot tidier in my first build as well. And that might have actually made it so that it was harder for things to move around and cause a short. The other thing that I noticed with the previous build is you notice that I put the GPS back here. And you'll notice that a new build is back here. The GPS was working in that position. Uh, I put it out there because... It meant I didn't have to cut any foam, and it had a view of the sky. Sat next to the ESC, 
um, did mean for some reason that was taking a very long time to lock. There might have been a little bit of interference, maybe harmonic, a little bit of RF or something that was making it unhappy. So it could take six or seven minutes at the field to lock up with this new position. I'll go into how all this is set up now. Uh, it locks up in two minutes from a cold start. So that's an awful lot better. So the GPS at the back by the ESC was a bad idea. So let me show you how this is inside and how I've got it all set up uh, because this seems to be a much more robust build. It's a lot tidier as well. I've taken my time a little bit more and learned those lessons and implemented in this time around. So this time it's the Matek F411 WSC flight controller. I've used a few of these in a couple of mates builds. This is the first one that I've used and it goes together quite nicely. Again, there's lots of soldering to do, but it sits beautifully in the normal position. You'll notice that underneath where the flight controller needs to sit, I have glued in a piece of flat plastic to act as a much more secure, robust place to put the flight controller on. I get lots of questions about how do you might mount your flight controllers and the way I do it, I use double-sided foam tape. I actually get the stuff that's designed to hold car number plates on that's incredibly sticky and with that thing in place it's a great position for me to put the flight controller but because the flight controller is so small there's also a little room around it to potentially put other things on there as well. I put the video transmitter here at the back, it's an Atlatl V1, and uh, the way it works is with the power cables, the ESC is a little bit forward, so the ESC is actually under the vent now, rather than, uh, than the VTX, and the VTX is out back here in lots of airflow, so that can keep nice and cool as well. That's a slightly more sensible layout than how I had it before. Only other couple of things in here, the receiver is kind of in the same place and there was enough room between the flight controller and the receiver for me to pop a Matek buzzer in here. Uh, having a Matek buzzer or something like the Vifly Finder or something is really, really important on little models like this, particularly at the moment, uh, but it's it not only will kind of give you audible confirmation when things like the GPS lock happens, which is immensely useful for iNav, but if this comes down in longer grass or, uh, you know, in a scrubland area, uh, it can be incredibly difficult to find it. Now, there is the RSSI trick that I talked about uh, at the end of last year, but uh, sometimes it's just easier when you're getting close, just kind of make the buzzer sound and you'll find the thing. Only other change then, of course, is the GPS. I have actually cut a little bit of foam out the top. Um, I've just kind of recessed it so that you can't, so it doesn't show underneath, and there's enough of a flying lead for me to open it up to get my battery in. I'm going to fly this with a little 3S 850 milliamp hour battery, uh, which should give me a decent amount of flight time with a little prop that's on the back here. Benefits of this setup, uh, obviously there's loads more UART on this flight controller than on the original one. So again, I've got my Lua script working, SmartPort is here, I'm controlling the Atlatl VTX via the flight controller. I've got more than enough UARTs to use for everything that I want to do. I could even do camera control if I really wanted to. Same thing, there wasn't more room inside to put the buzzer. And the last thing is the GPX and the VTX are in far better places and the GPS is a nice distance away from things like the antenna and stuff. Uh, the only little thing you might notice is there is a little 3D printed support for the antenna uh, that potentially could wobble around. It was only kind of glued into the foam. The foam's only three, four millimeters thick. So I 3D printed and designed this little piece here that goes around the bottom of it, which is just designed to kind of echo the, uh, the way that the vertical stabilizers run. In terms of the iNav setup, I've gone through and set it up exactly the same way as my iNav for Beginners 2020 series. I put 2.5.2 on here because what I want to be able to do is to plug this in on the field and use the SpeedyB app. Last time I checked, it wasn't quite supporting 2.6. Um, and the only thing I'm going to have to do is to potentially change the, uh, the nose up angle when it's flying but I need to really calm day and see how that works. And then the Maven, usual stuff, I'm gonna see how, uh, how she goes. I'm gonna to have to trim the control surfaces for manual straight and level flight, and then maybe do an auto tune. There is a preset for the iNav 250G um, setup. So I've just selected that one, so that should have the PIDs and everything pretty close. So if I get a chance to go out to the field again, there's a nice calm day, I will uh, show you the footage of how that goes. 
but this all up with a battery in it is about 265 grams uh, so with a bit of sensible changes maybe using a lighter VTX like that little one that I looked at a couple of weeks ago uh, might lighten it up and also the battery is a really important part of making sure you have a super light build maybe le leaving the buzzer out if you can uh, be confident you can use the RSSI trick every time you could still get this under 250g but this with the flight controller in i think for me is going to be a model that i'll fly more often got my on-screen display got my lua script on the radio and although i haven't got any hd recording on here uh, this could be a fun little wing that's quite unimposing to fly around in the local fields so stay tuned i'll post the video as soon as i get this maiden Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.